Yeah. You gotta work. You gotta work. Grind, shine, it's mine. Gotta show everybody it's my time. Getting here, you gotta work. Grind, shine, never mind who talking down cause they lie. Don't talk, you gotta work. Let the conversation begin. This is Let's Talk with your host, Carl Lee. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carl Lee, and this is with Let's Talk. And we have a, well, let me, let me, let me set the stage, Holland, before yes, we, sir. before we go into this. We, we, if, if you watched the girls' basketball we gotta say women's coach. You gotta the say women, women. they gonna get on the you, women. Man. The women's basketball. I don't want them to cancel you. Championship last <laughs> night. Yes. Okay. And and when I was on Dave's show, he's saying it was like twenty four million people viewers mm-hmm. to the game. And when you start talking about that, that beats everything other than football, basically. Yes. Football. I think the Olympics, and I think there might have been one more, mm-hmm. but no. Professional sport, college sport, no other sport out produced got that many viewers to watch. Yeah, I mean, and 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 you can you can try to blame it on individual players and say that that was the draw, but I think the game itself was the draw. It's the I mean, and and watching Mm -hmm. those individual players. Be great. Yes, 100%. Because I think what's happening with women's college basketball is that you're seeing the best of the best. You're seeing continuity. You're seeing faces, Caitlin Clark. You're seeing Don Say. You're seeing those individuals come up through that program. You know what I'm saying? Even in South Carolina where they have the new starting five, a lot of those players we've seen for the last couple years. And on-court performance, it, it just, the game flows well. It's just, it's how long just have a, you great known, to watch. Can, how long has you, have, have you been a fan of Caitlin? Like, because like, I just got to her. Like, I just got to her well, you, I, I, I mean, I like Caitlin because she a dog. You know, I'm, I'm by you Barbie. You know, that, that's who I'm rolling with. But, uh, but no, but she's she, not she, she's amazing. Watcher, so she's amazing to watch. The last interested. two years I've been watching. Yeah, see, I wasn't like mm-hmm. I'm not interested in like watching sports anymore. You know, I'm I'm kind of burnt out on it. But the very first time that I I saw her play, I was like, oh, yeah. And that was that was that was the turn on. But before we go any further, yes, <laughs> all right, we got Coach Charles Marshall from West Virginia State University. He's the head football or the head. Basketball, women's Football basketball, on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> basketball <laughs> coach, and he's here today. And we want because I I need expert I need expert opinions on on the female game. You know, I I, I want someone who can can talk about like what's the process like like how do you because we were talking off air before you came in, and I said. I don't know any coach who's going to be okay with a somebody shooting a shot ten yards, ten feet past the three point. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, how do you how do you get comfortable with that? So, coach, tell us a little bit about where you you know give us a little bit of background on being at West Virginia State and what you how you viewed the game. Well, first of all, guys. First of all, guys, thank you so much for uh, having me on today. Uh, it, it's a huge honor to be here, uh, and I'm, I'm excited. Looking forward to the conversations that we're going to have today. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did have a good time yeah. <laughs> already uh, before we even got on here. Uh, but, man, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, being here at West Virginia State, uh, this will be this was year eight. eight. Uh, yeah. So I've been here for a while. This is home. Uh, I might as well be from West Virginia now uh, as long as I've been here. Uh, you know, I was at uh, Glenville before I took over at West Virginia State. Uh, so I've, 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 I've kind of been around the block, uh, and I've been uh, – had some pretty good success uh, along the way, uh, thanks to players that we've ha- that we have had, mm-hmm. and just just looking to continue to grow the game, man. I, I think right now you're talking about uh, the game last night. I, I definitely was tuned in. Uh, I don't know how you can be a 
women's basketball coach and not be tuned into women's women's sports in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's funny because I, I made a post on Facebook uh, the uh, after that uh, game against UConn and uh, Iowa the uh, the other day, and uh, our our head official he he sent me a message because uh, I didn't agree with the call on, on that. Are you talking about the, uh, the uh, yeah the the, 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 off, the, the, the illegal screen. screen? Yeah, and I just in that moment and and. and the call was the correct call to be made. It, it, yeah, and, after and you looked at it, 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 was. it, it is the yeah. right call. They they made the right decision. So you know you can't be mad. They got a, officials got a job to do. But I think in the man's game, they let a lot of that stuff go, and they don't call ticky tack stuff. But in that moment, I just thought you got to let that play play out because it, it to me, the defensive player didn't have an advantage, and it didn't. It didn't take advantage away from the def- the defensive player, and it didn't create a, a huge enough van- advantage for the offensive player. That's just me looking at it from from that view. Uh, now, if I'm on the other side, I, yeah, call that offensive foul. We want it. We, okay. I want it. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this because 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 I was I was on Facebook and I was hitting people back. No, it's, it is a foul. Yeah, it was. And I get and I get it was the, the it was what. Three seconds left. Yeah, yeah, it was. And nice. and 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 it to me, I'm thinking, okay, that ref wasn't even looking at the clock. Yeah, I'm sure he knew that the that time was short. But I could, it, and, and again, like I, I can't, you know, I don't know nothing about basketball, so I can't, I can't, I can't help neither. I can't outdo none to either one of you. Uh, but I, I, I was like looking at that, and I was like, okay, that's definitely a foul, and. You can't, how do you not call that? Yeah, it just yeah, I don't know if you make it in that moment. Maybe you let it play out on court. But I, I've but, heard that. Yeah. I've heard that forever. That's always been kind of the conversation. Yeah. You don't make that call because it's it's late in the game or you know it's late in the half. But but, but I is it? But, e- but the rules way, aren't that way. Either way, the ref loses unless they dismiss oh, yeah. the shot. So yeah. if 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 you know he doesn't call it, she doesn't call it. They make the shot. They win the game. Yeah. They're going to be in a losing and, position. And, and, and but and, and before you say that, coach, you are being modest because, like I said, you are the head coach of the West Virginia State University women's basketball team. You have back-to-back national Division II tournament appearance. We was in the conference championship this year, and we've had some, what, uh, three years, 20-win seasons, something to that effect? Yes, yes. last two years, back-to-back. Uh, I'm sitting here season. looking at that. Yeah. You know, I'm look, I, so I'm co- look- Coach being a little modest. We've and and being look, a little we, modest. We, 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 <laughs> Okay, give us give us the give us some more good stuff. Okay, J- you know, t- because part of be, part of having you on is 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 talking about your success that you're having at West Virginia State, and then for the folks who don't know it, we want to make sure that they get it. And then we're gonna then we're gonna pick your brain and get your expert opinions on other stuff. So yeah. g- come on and give us a little bit more of of kind of the what you've done at West Virginia State, how you done it, how you built. You know, people have been talking about culture and all this kind of stuff. Tell us a little bit. Get into in depth parts of that and kind of help us with, you know, what are you doing with the girls? to make them play the way that they play, play together. Because that part of that teamwork is critical. You know, you can see it in those games last night. It's critical when you're a team. Like, you, it's hard to be the team. You know, when everybody's playing, ain't nobody selfish. It's hard. Mm-hmm. So give us a little bit about that. Well, you know, when, when I first took over the program, uh, we – it didn't have a whole lot of tradition, uh, you know. Uh, they they had had some success in the past. Uh, 2004, they uh, had made it to the uh, national tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- one thing that I was excited about when I when I initially took over the program uh, was it was going to give me an opportunity to come in and build something and and put them on the on the map, so to speak. Put West Virginia State in in the conversation. Uh, one thing I didn't like about when I when I came on my visit uh, to the to the university when Nate Burton brought me in, who is a, a tremendous uh, athletic director. Yeah, shout out Nate. You know, it was no pictures of anything women's basketball in that building, mm. uh, and, and that still bothers me. Uh, you know, but you gotta win. 
you know, you, you got to win championships. You got to you got to be successful. Uh, and, and that's one of the main things I preach to recruits. That's one of the main things I preach to our players. We're trying to be the first. We're trying to be the first. And, yeah. and, and, I, and, I, and we have accomplished a lot uh, in, in these eight years that – you know, I, I told our – we had six seniors that we're going to lose this year. And, and what I told them at last game uh, was that you guys are the most accomplished seniors to have, who I, to have ever played at West Virginia State women's basketball, the most accomplished. And, and That's huge. And, and that, huge. That's, that's very huge. Uh, you know, broke – First team to crack the top 25, uh, which was last year. Yeah. Uh, first team to knock off a uh, uh, number one ranked team uh, yes, ever. Yes, sir. I was you at know, that game. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. you, we, we've just – first team to put up the most points. First team to set school records uh, for three-pointers made in a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we have done so it, – it, it's so much I can't even, I can't even name them all. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm proud of, of of where we started, and it, it goes back to the those those first those first couple teams because we didn't get off to the start that I thought we would. You know, coming from Glenville, uh, where there is tradition, there there was already a blueprint kind of set in place. Yeah. Uh, very support from the community. Uh, we had to build that here, I, I, mm-hmm. I believe, and it, it took some time. It didn't happen as quickly as I wanted it to happen. Again, coming from Glenville, I thought I was just going to come back, come in here and roll. And, and mm-hmm. I got slapped in the face, man. Yeah, I, and, I, and we definitely want to touch on that experience with coaching under Coach Carwell, who just got the job at Tennessee. But when we look at what's going on, the explosion of women's basketball, not only nationally, but even here within the state. I mean, we had uh, – West Virginia State University, UC, Fairmont, I think they all made – y'all made the national tournament. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but Marshall and WVU yeah. made the NCAA national tournament. So we have five schools within the Louisville State of West Virginia make national tournaments and make national news. We had a coach to get a premier job. So what would you contribute to the explosion and just the, the – what's going on with women's college basketball? Let me, let me make a correction. Uh, I – didn't work for Coach Caldwell. She, oh, okay. She okay. was uh, as a when I first got to Glenville as an assistant. She was a player, so I coached uh, her. You coached her. I coached oh, her. That's oh. even bigger than oh, that's, that's, that's bigger. Yeah, so I had, I, had, I gotta get that out there. Okay. That's <laughs> so, the story. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've never worked for her, but, okay. but we all under that same tree. Okay. Uh, I saw. I apologize about yeah, that. No. <laughs> yeah. But I had it, she, up. she is. Uh, I got an opportunity to coach her my first year as assistant coach at Glenville. Wow which was a a tremendous experience. I always knew that she would be special. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and she'll tell you that because I I told her that when she was a player. Uh, But uh, the guy that brought me in and gave me my shot, even at my school that I graduated from, Berea College, where I got my first shot, NAI school, uh, Bunky Harker Mm Road, my mentor to uh, to, – uh, still today, uh, he he just called me a few minutes ago. Uh, amazing guy, but that he's one of the the he's the reason why we I, I play the way that I play. Uh, he he started it, uh, gave me that's how I got my start into uh, coaching, and that's and I I just bought into that philosophy, and I, I just feel like. That's the way to go for women's basketball. And we definitely want to talk about your system. But back to the, <laughs> but, but, but what would you contribute to the explosion of women's college basketball? It, right now, man, I, I think it's it's a combination of players getting better on their mm-hmm. own, players having more resources, players being able to get in the gym and, and work with trainers. Uh, mm. And and I, I think all of that plays a factor in, into where we are now. But I also think we just got good coaches too right now that can motivate, that can help push kids to, to get to where they're trying to go too. Is it for – the, for, for the women's game, it seems when, – when I watch it, and I again, I, I, I'm self-proclaimed not a sports – guy watching sports like I'm not going to sit down and watch a bunch of sports but I'm locked into the to the women's game right watching it it's it looks different to me it's it's the passion in which I see on the court is amazing to me mm-hmm. That's I point. don't know you know and to me coaching that passion has to be has to be a great 
thing because you know when those ladies are out there on the court, they're going to give you everything. Everything that you spent time on in the week, they're going to put that time, they're going to put that passion into that to try to get that out on the court. Am I am I seeing something wrong or is that is that – is that true? I, I don't think you are, and, and I can't. I can't speak as far as on the on the man's side because I've never coached man. Right. You know, I can only talk from a player's perspective uh, and just kind of what I see uh, when I'm walking past uh, our man's practice on on campus uh, as I'm heading home. Uh, but for for the women's man, I, I think it's they they do work hard. I think they do care, uh, but. I, I think I think men care too. You know, I, I, and I don't think that they don't care. And Hollis, I'm curious about how yeah. you see this. I don't think that that we don't care. Mm-hmm. I think though, but we're quick to jump individualized for credit, mm-hmm. okay, or pass and blame. Yeah, I think that I think part of the men's. Is we don't want to take all that credit. We don't. We we want the we want the fame in it, and it doesn't look that way to me for in the women's game. Most most women that I've came across and I've, that I've been blessed to coach, they want to strive for perfection, and they mm. want to make sure they're doing it right. And I, I think that's why you probably see a little more passion, a little more fight. Uh, when you're watching their games, uh, and and they they're not going to be more athletic than a man, but in in some cases now, because so they, 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 it, it, it we got <laughs> we, we got women dunking now, man, and, yeah. and, that, and that changes the game. Uh, but I, you know, I, I got a young lady on our team who can who can get up and grab the rim with ease, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's they work just as hard, so they have they have a lot to prove as well. And and they lay it all out on the line, man. You know, we we don't we don't hold anything back. We don't sugarcoat anything, and and we work them. We work them, and they they know what they have to do, and they try to go out and execute that to the best of their ability. And, and I would think, just from my opinion, I think it's the corporatization of sports, and I think particularly basketball, where you're seeing, and I'm just strictly talking on the men's side, where you're seeing these young men almost like get the lunch pill and sort of go to work at early ages, right? They're getting the attention younger and younger. They're uh, thinking about how to monetize those skills younger and younger and younger. And I think to your point, when you talk about just being an individual, I think that's how they're starting to look at itself. I mean, when you're jumping from AAU to AAU team, you're going to school to school, you're, you're thinking about the game just on and to itself where women – Maybe not now moving forward, but at least in the past, they might be playing in front of half empty gyms and then everybody comes to the men's game. You know, so you're playing for the team, you're playing for the coach, you're playing for the love. And I think that whatever happens moving forward, women's basketball at all levels have they gotta work extremely hard to 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 keep that passion and that energy right in the bubble. So it doesn't turn into kind of what the men's game and then again, and I ain't taking nothing away. I mean no. It, they're tremendous athletes. Absolutely. I just don't think the team thing is there how it used to be. Well, and and, and I watch and I watch. You know, I, I work at the uh, South Charles Community Center, so I I walk in and I see dads working working their kids out. Doesn't matter, boy, girl. Um, but in most cases, it's shooting. Mm-hmm. Most cases, it's dribbling. And I know that you can't do. You can't really do defense if you're doing that. But I think that takes – when you're doing that, it's good for the offensive side. But it's 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 challenging for that defensive side because now you – do you where do you get that from if you're not getting it? I think you laid it out, though. You get it from that passion. You get it from the love of your coaches, your team. Defense is – it's just – I mean – and there is some skill set to that. I'm yes. not saying it's not, but I think even to maybe about the skill set, you just got to have that dog and that heart and that want to to really, again, crash out in order to have ultimate team success. Because taking a charge ain't glorious. No. They no. got a. Uh, I forget the um, the the woman's name. She played in a the tournament. They was just they was talking about how many charges she take yeah. a game. I forget I forget her yeah. name. Yeah. But they was just talking about she she she's a professional charge taker. And how you you don't see that no, on the other side? No, no. See what I'm saying? Yeah, no. you you got girls. You know, I, 
I got on one of my players. Uh, we was in a meeting, and she uh, a, a officials meeting, and I'm not gonna say her name, but she was she we was in a meeting, and she told the official we was he was going over charges. She said, "I'm not. Uh, I don't take charges," and I kicked her out of the meeting. <laughs> I kicked her out. <laughs> and, and he still talks about that, but it, it was one of those things, man. Like everybody is not built for that. Yeah. You know, it every it's certain things to be a good defensive player. Everybody's not built for that because it's hard. It's hard to be yeah. a good basketball player. It's hard to be a good teacher. It's hard. It, everything, anything you want to do, it, it you got to practice it. You got to work at it. And you know, it, but I, I say that I, I say I tell you that just because it's for people who truly want to be special and want to be great, they got to put in the work, man. They mm-hmm. got to put in the work and, and to, to get out what they want. And, it, and and I always tell our players, especially on this level, uh, Division Two, this is more for your memories, more for your family's memories than anybody else. Yes, in the moment, we're going to make people happy. But at the end of the day, once you're gone from here, Nobody's going to care but you at the end of the day. Nobody's going to care how many points you score. Nobody's going to care that you was an all-conference player. Uh, you know, you may get fortunate enough to be inducted into the Hall of Fame 10, 15, 20 years from now. Then people will care again for that moment. But in, in, while you're in it, you got to enjoy it. You got to give it everything you got. And, and I think on the women's side, that's where the love comes in to play mm. more. Because they not most of them ain't going professional, you know. It, it, they 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 plan for they sc- to get to get a degree and to try to be successful in, in this in this in this it, instance. Is the, is that better? Is that a better mindset than what most young men who automatically maybe even parents are even thinking that they're going to go. To D1, D2, D3. It, it, is it better to think that you are or you aren't, you know, how, what, how do you how do you inject that into the, 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 the right amount into a to an athlete? It's hard because you don't want to shatter somebody's dream, man. I, you yeah. know, I'm not I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know, don't shoot for if you want to go pro professional and play professional. No, that's a dream you got to have. But the reality of it is that's not going to be the case. So you got to be in it for, for that moment and, and get out of it what you can while you're in it. Uh, but you got to be able to to make sure you're doing the work if you want to still reap the accolades and, and the and get the rewards and, and, and get the benefits from it. And because think, it's not going to be given and, to and, you. And I, think to, and, and I think that's what we're seeing, right? With Coach Calipari at Kentucky. Where he just uh, resigned from Kentucky and he went to Arkansas. And I would imagine without having any you know knowledge of the situation, I believe probably was a conversation. Hey, because you know he was the whole one and done guy, right? Yeah. He bring him in, you know, churn him and burn him. And after a while, and what we're seeing now as of late, that's not working. And I think that it depends on your mindset because I think if to the overall health, if we're just specifically talking about college basketball, to the overall health, even college football to a degree, to the overall health of the game, that's not necessarily a good mentality. The overall health of the game is to have ultimate team success. Mm-hmm. And then like Coach said, if you work, you do the things you're going to do, then you'll have the individual success. Well, didn't so we I think see we see that? that play out. But it's hard in the in the, in the times that we're in. Facts. It's Facts. hard to get kids to play and see it as a one unit versus individual. And you got to be a special coach. I think you got to be a special motivator. I think you got to figure out what the needs of the of the of of that individual kid is. Mm-hmm. To try to implement it and and get them to believe that and buy into the overall team success. And if if it, and what I always tell our players, man, if if we get on the wall, if we win a championship, we get on the wall. We, we like all that. on the wall. We all on the we wall. All I like that, coach. And, and they go I like that. And, yeah. and th- as good as as what we've been, and I'm proud of what we've done. Yeah, I, we still don't have a team on the wall. And and I and like as that. much as as much success as we've had the last few years, those kids are not going to be remembered. 
because they're not on the wall. I like that. Yeah, and and, and that's just as uh, when I'm walking through the, you look at all the all the softball players, all the tennis teams that's won championship, the the men's teams that's won championship, the volleyball teams that's they won on championship. They on the wall. They on the wall. You you gonna remember them people? Yeah. See, and 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 to and to his point on the wall, <laughs> I, you know, we have a we have what's called a ring of honor in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it and and it's. It's a it's kind of a voted on thing. And in my head, I I feel like I have fit the bill. Mm-hmm. But I ain't on the wall. Yeah, on the wall. Yeah. And, and and it bothers me because I don't have another game to play. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't have another season. Mm-hmm. And there's gonna be guys coming in that that's gonna be playing. They're gonna get more interceptions, more tackles, and mm-hmm. and, and, yeah. and maybe be better yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, hold on. Like, hey, you know, hey, because hey, I'm going to Minnesota this summer. Who I need to talk to? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Who I need to meet with? I, I'm going to assume that's going to be the president or, or the owner or somebody. Because, I, I, you know, because it was one of the things, like, even going to Marshall. When I walked into Marshall uh, as a recruit, I saw I saw Fuzzy Fazell's jersey, number 27. And I was saying, okay, my goal is... I want to get my jersey retired when I leave. Mm-hmm. Well, now they don't retire jerseys anymore. And, and you know, and, and so every every level when you get there, you know, for me, I've always tried to make it like, okay, I want to get to that thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And that Ring of Honor thing has just been like, it's, it's yeah, been, been it's, talking it's, about that for a yeah, years. I've been talking about that for some while, for a while yeah. now. Mm-hmm. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. We're going to take a quick break. Follow us on Facebook at Let's Talk Carl Lee. Visit WCHSnetwork.com slash Let's Talk for more. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Contact Carl Lee at Let's Talk at ProMessage.com, Dell Cooper at DCooper at WVRadio.com, or call 304-342-8131. Ask Carl a question or comment on current or previous episodes. Visit Let's Talk Carl Lee on Facebook. Like, rate, and subscribe from your podcast service to help more people find Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Now, back to the conversation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and we're talking sports and women's basketball primarily, but really the structures of of the game itself, or or that particular game and mm-hmm. how it how it produces greatness and teamwork and all of those kinds of things. And Hollis, on the break, you 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 were saying you wanted to talk about you wanted to bring up a couple other things. Yeah, too. for sure. Because um, you, you mentioned something just about you know, coach about being ready, hardworking, and to run your system that you run. Not only do you have to, is it physically taxing because you run a fast-paced game. It's also it can be a little mentally taxing. Mm-hmm. You run a ten-woman system. You you uh, five in, five out every two minutes. I've never seen this until West Virginia State. Now, when Kim Caldwell was at Glenville, she ran it, um, and it's the most exciting way to watch basketball. And I. I'm a huge West Virginia State University women's basketball fan. I come to y'all's games and I leave <laughs> during halftime at the men's game. Don't tell nobody else. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell nobody else that. But, <laughs> but, I'm, but we appreciate I'm you. To watch y'all. <laughs> but tell us just tell us about the system and how do how in the world do you get buy-in from that? It's it's challenging. It can be very challenging, but I think it can be rewarding. I mm-hmm. think it can be fun. I think for the women's game, I think it's. For me, again, this is this is since I got my start in in coaching. This is all I've been around coaching wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just think it's the way you got to play. I, I think it gives you the best advantage. I think it gives kids the opportunity to play that normally wouldn't play in another system. Uh, again, we go we go ten twelve deep, ten twelve uh, deep, and, and he exaggerated. And I'll, <laughs> I'll, player, ten to twelve players are playing the game. I'll, I'll play everybody if I have to, and, yeah. and that. If, that's not going to happen everywhere. If you if you look at it, no, you know, most <laughs> most, <laughs> most people's going not. seven, eight deep, eight maybe, max, yeah. maybe. I mean, UConn went at what they play six, six. Yeah, they didn't play too many. <laughs> they, and, and granted, they had some kids hurt, but UConn would not play that many either. Yeah, I mean, even like that's what they saw yeah. South Carolina by seven, yeah. eight deep, and that was kind of a wild so, thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you it, it 
it's definitely a, a different way of thinking. Uh, it's a uh, you you, you got to sell it to your kids, and mm-hmm. and for me, I'm just upfront uh, and tell them what they're getting themselves into. I don't sugarcoat it. Uh, you know, we but I, I tell them you're gonna have fun. You're gonna have an opportunity to play. Now it's yeah. gonna be up to you and on on how much you play, because other factors uh, come into play. Your mm-hmm. your work ethic, uh, if you're producing, uh, if you notice, our starting lineup is never the same. Never ever the same. <laughs> that was another bugged out thing. Okay, hold, hold on. Because because game, game. Game. <laughs> he's old school. He's all messed. Oh, yeah, 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 y'all, just, never. y'all just threw me off the chain. Yeah, but it, tell you. And that's because it's all based off of production. So, it's, so uh, uh, basically, so you go into your week, and the work ethic that that the, the top five players have, and some and of that's got to be based top ten, top ten, are going to be the five that are likely to start based off of. The reality of positions also, the, the, like you got to have point guards, you got to have a center, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah, so the the way for us, the way it works, we always want to have a, a point guard, we always want to have uh, a post, and we always want to have a uh, two shooters in. Yeah. It's kind of the philosophy behind it. Um, but it's you, you got to get the kids to see it beforehand. And understand, and, and and I think we've where we are right now, and and just traditionally, and and some of the success that I've had, they know it works and it's been yeah. successful. Uh, All right, so let let me well, let me let me ask a question. I got one. I got one to to to, yeah. to that to that point. I so my daughter is coming to you, and and and. And I know, I mean, the benefit of her coming to you is I know she's going to play. Mm-hmm. If potentially, she potentially, it potentially. It's still potential. Poten- yeah. yeah, potentially she's got a chance to to play because that's the structure that you have. So I, in one sense, I see that being a huge positive of me saying, yeah, we can, go, we can come here. Mm-hmm. You know, the other side of that is I've got a really talented daughter and – she she gonna be in five out five, <laughs> and I'm like, well, hold on. Yeah, you know, have you had that kind of the, have you had to have that kind of conversation with with the recruit family? So or do they just automatically know because they see it? Most people. And it's funny that you asked that. I have not to be honest with you. Most wow, people when, that surprised me. When, yeah, that when, when I explain it, because most people say, that's, I did that in AAU. That's mm-hmm. how I play AAU. Yeah. And kids, kids, they look at Steph Curry, they look at Golden State Warrior and what they've been able to accomplish. People want to play fast. They they mm-hmm. want to shoot shots, you know. And and we, we I tell kids we're gonna shoot up a hundred shots a game. That that's one of the game goals. We're gonna shoot forty five threes a game. Uh, you know, wow. the la- the, the, it's like that. The the last <laughs> yeah. two years, we have led the country in offensive rebounding, mm-hmm. and. You got to recruit those type of players. Yeah, Thirty three is an absolute. Dog. <laughs> she she is a dog on the board. She the female and, you, and, and that a person dog. that person has that mindset that that's what I'm here to do, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm going to do. And when you yeah. can sell that, yeah, you're and, good. So so and, and me, we and we okay, just talk and we just talk and I just talk about what the system entails and and how you can benefit in it, and then I let them make the decision. Because, okay, so coming from a fan's perspective, the positive is, as you just mentioned, when it's on and you got them five coming yeah. in, coming out, it, it, it's, it's, it's the best fan viewing of yeah, a game that I, you can have because yeah. it's a blistering pace. If you're not there, if you if you get to the game, if, the, if it's really going, if you get the game 10, 15 minutes late, that might be halftime because yeah. that thing is rolling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shots is going up. You're getting up and down the court. However, are, are there situations because you have to spread – that maybe who you would start in a traditional said so that five, you kind of got to spread that five amongst the two teams, you essentially. Do. You do. So are there situations where you might find yourself in like, we used to roll in this way, but now I I, I, I want to go back into that traditional bag and just roll with these because, you know, in those they, critical yeah. situations. And, and, and that's another way I present it too is, you know, once, once you get close game, games on the line, we'll go best five, go try to win the game. Is is okay. what we 
typically do. Sometimes it, it, it works out that way. Sometimes it don't. Yeah. Sometimes your best five is who's hot that game. It's who hot that game. And that's that's the beauty of it too. Yeah. Uh, but it, it it's hard because and that's why the way we practice it, it's 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 different every day. Uh, you we because we will pull people out and throw them into another group and it, because it, it's it's really no two groups because if you get in foul trouble we plug somebody else yeah. in you got to be able to keep it rolling yeah. so and, and, I, and I think it makes it I think it makes everybody be ready yeah that's a fact that's a fact uh, and, and, and sometimes and we've had I've had kids that, that have a hard time accepting the role too because mm-hmm. uh, if, if we do get in foul trouble and and if it's if it's a post player uh and we don't have a post player that we can sub p- plug in. We got to throw somebody else who's not a post mm-hmm. in that spot to try to make it work. And, and sometimes we, we're not ready for that. And that's why I was just saying, like, in, to run that system. And we'll talk about Coach Carwell because he runs, y'all run mm-hmm. something similar. similar. And, and I'll just say to watch that game when Glenville came to state and to watch state and Glenville go at it. It was an absolute chess match. They both five in five out. Five. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, bro, it was the best game I've seen in the last probably five, ten years, like far as just being there in person. But what I was going to say is that, like I said, I think in order to run your system and the players you're recruiting, the players you got to have that's going to be successful as you've been, they have to be so mentally tough because I could be hot for that two minutes that I'm out there, but that two minute buzzer go off and I'm coming out yeah. and I got to come out and I got to wait for my other two minutes to go back in. So you got to be not only flexible mm-hmm. in position and how you, you know, you, and you got to play. You got to buy in. Tough. You yeah, got to yeah, buy in. Because that's going to be a challenge if, if I'm that one that's that's hot, I'm hot. Yeah. you know. And, I'm and, like, and, bruh, and, so, and some <laughs> and some t- and, and, and this is where I think I've gotten better as a yeah. coach. Sometimes we'll leave that person in. Yeah, yeah. And and, and in the past, when I first when I first I, it was I, locked. I, yeah, I'm it's. I'm, this is how I'm doing it, and I'm not changing it. And, and I think I've gotten better over the years with making. Well, those I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to hear. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie, coach. Sometimes but, I'm be cussing you out. I be cussing you out a little bit, coach. I ain't gonna lie. To you. <laughs> you know, Miss. You know, Miss Debbie, right? Yeah. Miss Anderson. Yeah. Oh, she she gives me an earful after yeah, her game. I be, I be you gotta go inside. Coach. You gotta go inside more, coach. You gotta go inside. <laughs> but I, I think you be. You know, the, these last couple of years, because we have had. Post players who mm-hmm. can score inside. We have we have gone inside out. We've yeah. gone inside first, then out. Where it used to be, we going we shooting the three first, and then we worrying about. And you going can't inside argue later. with the results. Like I yeah. said, we, I was gonna say, we can't argue with the results. We, t- we win it. In today's game, if you're not shooting the three, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you. I don't know how you gonna win if you ain't shooting the three. And we had a but all our the whole 10, yeah. 12, we play can shoot the three yeah. a little bit, a little you know, bit. They, little they, bit. They, some they some of them we, we got work with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got about two or three that came, but we got the two or three for rebounding defense. But the other ones can get it up. But that's that's another beauty of the mm. of the system. Now we got some kids like that they know they're not supposed to shoot. The three. Yeah, exactly. but I. Everybody for that plays for me ultimately has the green light. Sometimes yeah. that's bad, <laughs> but I think that's what keeps them engaged yeah. and come in ready to work hard. Or you should have been my high school day. coach. Yeah, <laughs> like like when you, we was talking in the room back there, you were saying the, the, the shot. Like I, I couldn't take a shot. I would rather I would rather you take a bad shot than turn the basketball over. At mm-hmm. least. Again, we've been leading the country in rebound. At least I know we got a shot at getting the rebound. Yeah. And what I love about the system too is like like I said, I mean, if you if you watch state the last two or three years, I mean, we got shooters, we got uh big women, we got a defensive specialist who's an elite athlete, I believe, number twenty five. She's she's she's, she's a got, special athlete. I, I, I think, think she, she should run track. I think she, my she should. I think she yeah. was our most improved yeah. player. She's an elite athlete, defensive she, specialist. She is uh thirty three. Yeah, rebound. I'm talking about rebound attack. She had 20 rebounds uh, last season during a tournament game. I mean, we just she's like yeah. that. And that's that's what we were look, talking about just the yeah. other day about you know, and the, and these are D1 major in the championships talking about 20 rebounds. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm t- so so you. You you had like I said uh, I had I had my facts wrong, but so you you coached 
yeah. Caldwell. So what do you think about her maturation? Like I said, y'all was battling U.S. State. She at Glenville. She won a national championship at uh, Glenville. Goes to Marshall, uplifts that program, and now she at the – and I think what people have to realize is that – Tennessee in women's basketball, that's literally like going like Coach Huff going from Marshall to Alabama yeah. to LSU it's to Florida State mountain, to Notre Dame. It is yeah. the tippy tippy top of women's sports. For her to be doing what she's doing in such a short period of time is absolutely amazing. Uh it's I'm proud of her. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm honored that I was able to coach her for a year and and, and that I know her. Uh, I I truly believe, and I, I've always said this, and and people look at me like I'm crazy, but I think what we do and what she does is a little bit different from how how we do it. She's yeah. tweaked it, and she she's gone on to do some amazing things. Uh, but I, I, I think it can work uh, if you got the similar same type of athletes. Yeah. I, I, it, it's still basketball at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And if you got those athletes, I, I think it. I think it'll be fine. Is the recruiting? That's what I'm about to ask next. Yeah, yeah. 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 With, with, with this system, the recruit. Tell us a little bit about the recruitment of it, because to me, it seems like it frees you up a little bit. When you go to recruit, like I can, I can recruit this this woman at this position, and maybe can be multiple positions. Or so, so, I, so I don't really get like how, like, are you targeted for point guards, um, bigs yeah. inside, those yeah. type of things. The, the key key spots you got to have, you got to have a really really good point guard. Yeah, you got to have a really good shooter. And you got to have somebody who's willing to do the dirty work and rebound that basketball. Mm-hmm. Th- those are the key positions that you got to have. Tell us a little have. bit and, about those positions so, specifically, so like what you're looking for, handles, what, all that kind of stuff. What what we look for and, and what I call positions is and it's based off our, 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 our press. Uh, we want to have a, a person on ball. We want to mm-hmm. have – Two wings, we want to have an interceptor, and we want to have a back player. The back player is our rim protector. Interceptor, you typically want that to be your point guard because they're going to be smart, they're going to be quick, they're going to be agile, they're going to be able to make plays. And your wing players, you want to at least have uh, your wing players to be able to be knocked down shooters or a score. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want your own ball person to be somebody who is athletic and who is just can get after it. Now, whether they are score or whether they just a defensive specialist, and, and that's what Latifa is. She, she's yeah, more she's defense like than, yeah. than she is on the offensive side, which, again, she's gotten tremendously better yeah. on the offensive end since she got here as a freshman. Uh, but you you got to have those, those positions filled uh, for it to be successful and for it to work at a high level. I, I I truly believe that, I'm, I'm, but but I also think the you, the the way we do it, and you know, I had a large roster this year. Yeah. I probably had one of the largest in the country. Yeah. Uh, we we had twenty on the roster. Oh, this year. yeah, the yeah. bench was full, bro. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So it, was, yeah. it 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 also gives players an opportunity to play that probably wouldn't get an opportunity somewhere else too. Just because you got you, you got to have large numbers because you got to account for injuries. Uh, you you got to have at least fourteen to finish the season with, and if, if you don't, it, that's when you can get. If if it gets down to the season and you only got eight players, that's where you can kind of where you've been playing this high octane offense all season. It can it can mess you up. Your, so your so you actually up. dress them. That number, yeah, yeah. yeah. The bench is full. Like yeah. it's 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 twenty. I was about to ask him about that. It's yeah. e twenty deep. Yeah, yeah. I, I I typically like to have eighteen. Mm-hmm. Mostly uh, this year we had we had twenty. Mm-hmm. Of 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 the of the eighteen that if you had it perfectly at the eighteen, do you have a number of point guards, number bigs? Yeah. Do you do you, like like what what is the perfect scenario if you could go out and recruit? How many you, of this and how many of that would you have? You typically want to have at least two really good point guards and, and then a, a backup point guard, so three, and then you want to have at least two good post players. And you, you need to the the post players are the post players and the point guards is probably the most important mm-hmm. pieces to have because you the. 
the point guard's got to be able to direct and get us into the offense as well as play good defense. We, we're asking our point guards to do more than anybody yeah. because they got more ground to cover, and I, I give them more freedom on the defensive side. And they got to be able to knock and, down some shots, too. They got to be able to knock down shots, which yeah. that, that's where we haven't been that strong at. Uh, with our point guards being able to make uh, uh, shots from behind the arc. Uh, but I, I, I just think that that's going to be mm-hmm. – I think we're going to be better at that moving forward. So specifically, you know, we lost a lot this – we're yeah. going to lose a lot this uh, coming up season in uh, 24-25. So what are you looking to recruit this offseason? Who are we looking – not specifically yeah. players, but what what type of, you know, like Coach said, what, what are we looking for as far as position is concerned? Yeah. We, we're looking to bring in a score. Uh Got to bring in at least uh, another post player, which we we going we got a we got a really good uh, kid that was a, a sophomore this year. Yeah, she hurt she, her knee. Right? She hurt her knee a yeah. freshman year, so mm-hmm. she she gets that year back. Uh, I'm looking for her to come in and be be special yeah. for us next year. Uh, so I, I'm looking to bring in another post player, uh, and we're going to have to bring in uh, another shooter and a kid that can just. It, that's just a freak athlete yeah. and, and somebody who can put the ball in the hole. Those, those are the 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 three key uh, positions that we gotta that we gotta fill. We've done a great job already. We've we signed two uh, freshmen mm-hmm. uh, and got a, a JUCO uh, commitment as well. So she'll she'll be signed. So and we talked to ad nauseum at the, on this on this podcast <laughs> yeah. about transfers. So yeah. what, what do you are are because I know I talked to <laughs> Coach Penn is one of my best friends. So we always talk yeah. about he's gone into that portal deep. Yeah. So is, is that something you looking to explore or how, how do you sort of yep. gauge that? Yeah, we're we're in it. Uh, I'm and and I, and I'm probably uh, I'm torn about it. Uh, be, it, but I've utilized it. it it's it's been beneficial for yeah, us the last the, the last couple of years. The last couple of years, yeah. Was, yeah. You know, our two of our key players were Division One transfers. Yeah, uh, one from Bethune Cookman and one from Eastern Kentucky. Uh, they they was they was huge in our yeah. success. All conference players, yes. And so for. For the portal in itself, you know, I, I don't like it because it gives the kids too easy of a way out if it's not going well. You sound the like way, that man over the, there. The, the, the <laughs> way the way they think it, it, the way they think it should go. You, le- so, you legitimizing his own argument. So, and, and, and that's the part I don't like about yeah. it. Instead of because the reality of it is, we we're playing twelve players. It's still going to be somebody who's not going to play, and e- yeah. and even within those twelve, there's still going to be somebody who's not getting the minutes that they think they deserve. So that so the transfer portal instead of those kids going back in the gym and working harder to prove that they need to be out on the court, <laughs> it gives <laughs> it gives them a way it gives yeah. them a way out. Yeah. Now, just like coaches, just like anything else, it. Some situations are just not good for kids. Some, yeah. some, it, it may not be the right fit for that that kid. Uh, some coaches are are could could just be mistreating kids yeah. too, and a kid needs to get out of that situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and sometimes, especially on the on the Division One level, uh, sometimes they take kids that. Because they got more scholarships and they can take a chance on a, mm-hmm. a 13, 14, 15th player knowing that they probably not going to play. And that kid is a pretty good player. That kid would be a, a great player on Division Two level or lower. And sometimes that kid, they may not get an opportunity until they senior year mm-hmm. in, in a lot of cases. And that kid may want to just I, I get out. Just, just so they they can yeah. have an opportunity to play, yeah. but you can't you can't fire a kid for taking the opportunity to to go to the highest level. Gotcha, and and, that, and that's just what they're going to do. But it it still goes back to you. It it's no difference from a coach taking another job either. Yeah, well, and speaking of that, so it, speak, and that, speaking that's why that I'm coach, torn on it. Speaking of that, coach, I mean, we, you know, what I'm saying you done had some great seasons here at state. 
You got the Marshall job open up. You get, you got don't, connections to Tennessee now, Coach. <laughs> you know, we, I don't, see, don't do me like I, it. I, I want to see. I want to see you in that black and gold. See, but I, see, I, I wouldn't put you. I wouldn't put you on that spot right now. I ain't even mad at you. <laughs> I want to see him in the black and gold. There ain't no doubt in my mind because I, I think we can win the national championship. That's just. Me. I, I agree. We yeah. we close. I think we can win it. We close. And and to to Hollis's point about. Me and you being on the same page on the transfer issue. Sometimes I think sometimes it's 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 a parent's perspective because the kid's not getting mm-hmm. you know the time that they think they should get. Yeah. They're not scoring the way you the way they used to score, and and and, and literally almost every basketball player scored. Points in high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, if they're, if they're playing yeah. in college, they're likely have scored points or played great defense or got a tons of rebounds. And all of a sudden you get to college. And now you ain't you ain't you ain't getting that that green light to take that to take those shots. Now we got a problem. Mm-hmm. We don't have a problem with the system. We don't have a problem with the coach, other than we just ain't getting enough playtime. Mm-hmm. How frequently do you do you see that, and or have you experienced some of that where kids wanted to leave? Some of the young ladies wanted to leave because they just they they, they weren't part of that system of, of the rotation. Yes, I've experienced it, and and no, I haven't experienced. It. Let me explain. So. I've I've experienced it from a standpoint of our system mm-hmm. and and how we play. Like the last couple years, we haven't had anybody going to the portal, which I think as that's amazing. I, I think I think it goes. Facts. I, I think it goes to show the success that we've had, but it also goes I think it to speaks show, to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it shows the the kids genuinely like each other. I think it shows that they like the university, and so it, it's a it's a combination of 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 those things uh, on on why we have and, and the success that we've have had uh, on on why those kids haven't gone. But I, I think kids too are are smart nowadays, and they understand that once you go in there, you know. It's not guaranteed that you're gonna yeah, win. Right. Yeah, I think right. that's the major right. point. It yeah. ain't nothing guaranteed. Just because yeah, you're winning. Not now. Not and and, yeah. and it, it's and, and this is another reason why I don't like it. Uh because and, and COVID has played a part of it in it too, which this is the last year for, for COVID. So that'll that'll it'll help once we don't have any more COVID uh kids uh still playing. Gotcha. Um so but, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no but what, what I was going to say is it it's affecting it, it transfer portal is affecting high school recruitment. Yeah, tremendously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's affecting uh, junior college recruitment tremendously, and uh, along with the COVID, it, it's just it's because coaches are going they they going to take a player that's got experience before they take a high school kid. So, and I, you and mentioned that's in all sports. Too. That's all mm-hmm. sports. That's in there. Yeah. So, it, it don't matter if it's swimming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That <laughs> you, experience. You mentioned as far as like what we're looking for in 2024, 2025. So what do you have coming up that if a parent or child is interested in the program, wh- wh- how, how can they get in contact with you? You got any camps or anything that you like to put out there that's coming up? Yeah. Go. Uh, our camp dates are not set yet. Uh, we're, we're still working on that and finalizing that. But you can go once there gets set uh you can go to our our athletic website on on the uh, school's uh, web address uh to to find that under the women's basketball uh page uh and or you can just give me a call you know and that's west virginia uh, state university yes. uh and so but that, that's how you can get in contact with with me uh and i'm, I'm all over the place uh, man and, and you know I, i'm i'm looking for good people good character mm-hmm. people that 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 want to work hard, that's going to do the right things. Uh, I, I'm, I tell parents all the time, I'm, I'm here to help your kids. I'm not here to hold their hands. Uh, it's it's their job to want to go out and, and, and get their, their degree. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we'll, we'll hold them accountable. Uh, 
uh, but we we're not going to uh, hold their hands and, and and make sure they that they're uh, where they're supposed to be at this point. You you got to be able to do that. And, and that's an interesting approach. That's an imp- interesting a- approach because if I heard it correctly or, or, or took it right, so your role you're saying your role is is basketball, it's mm-hmm. the women's basketball, and all the things that come with that, but. That 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 woman has to that female has to put herself in the right places at the right time for classes and doing all those kind of things because at that point they know mm-hmm. they know they got an eight o'clock ca- mm-hmm. class they know they got a two they, o'clock class they got a night class they know they got work out they at, got, at eleven yeah. o'clock they know they got lift at at at, uh, at, at two thirty so you know they they know that's the schedule. huge. They know the schedule, and they, and they got to know the That's opp- accountability. Yeah, and they got to know the opportunity that exists now. Yeah, like I said, with women's college basketball, it's, it's on the rise. It's on the rise, yes. and again, we talk nationally. It's, it's cool. here. I'm and not even gonna say it's not on the it's rise. It's here. here. Yeah. It's here, I'm with you. and it's in the state. Like I said, we we have five teams go to a national tournament out of West Virginia alone. That's just West Virginia, and I would tell anybody. And I, I'm a little bit of a fanboy, but if you have not seen West Virginia State women's basketball, you need to make a trip to Institute to see it. it. Is the most exciting brand of basketball you will see. I'm telling you, well, Coach. That that's going that's going to get me there. You know, so I'm I'm gonna have to jump on. Where, where you been at? I, 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 <laughs> get on it. <laughs> oh, look, I ain't been back even for a football game for that matter. So, but I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna return the favor for you coming to the yes, show sir. to come to the game. So so we got a deal on I, that. I'm holding you to it. Okay, too, no man. doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate the time, and we'll get back to you again next week. The opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of WVRC Media, its management, employees, or sponsors. Follow us on Facebook at Let's Talk Carl Lee. Visit WCHSnetwork.com slash Let's Talk for more.